Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. This week I'll be continuing the uh, slap series of lessons by looking at some popular slap bass lines that are great to learn once you've nailed all the basics that I've run through in the previous lessons. As always, the sheet music tab and tracks for this lesson are all available over at TalkingBass.net. If you're watching on YouTube, then just follow the link in the info below, and if you're already watching at TalkingBass.net, then just hit that big download button uh, just below the video. Also, check out the lesson map for loads and loads more uh, lessons on uh, every aspect of bass playing. Uh, I release a lesson uh, every week, usually on a Friday, so uh, subscribe to receive updates on new releases. So the slap riffs that I'm going to cover are in a variety of styles. I didn't just stick to one style or player, so hopefully these uh, will be interesting for a wider selection of you. And uh, please don't comment on this uh, video chastising me for uh, not covering your favourite line or player. There's literally thousands of great slap bass lines to learn out there. I've purposely stuck to uh, fairly basic riffs and uh, avoided covering whole songs for the uh, sake of time. Uh, and uh, also, there's no uh, Les Claypool. I'm a huge fan and his bass lines are great, but a lot of his popular slap lines are quite tricky and often incorporate quick moves between uh, techniques like strumming and tapping. So, um, like I said, I'm going to keep things quite straightforward for this lesson. I'll be covering Les uh, in a new series of upcoming uh, lessons that I'm going to be doing called The Style File, where I'm going to take apart the playing style of a particular player and look at specific bass lines by that guy. So. Uh, Keep an eye out for that. First up, we have the intro or verse riff from the song Higher Ground by, uh, well, as played by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, which features the great Flea on bass. Now, as you may or may not know, this is actually a cover tune, and the original's by the legendary Stevie Wonder, and that has a funky keyboard intro instead of a slap bass uh, intro. So, uh, the original, uh, well, the, uh, <laughs> the Red Hot Chili Peppers version sounds like this. Okay, now with the, uh, with the backing track, that'll sound like this. Okay. Now this is a great exercise in slapping octave patterns, especially on that E and D string. Uh, and when I very first started playing this, when I first started slapping, I found it really difficult to do. I just found it so hard to get that first finger in between the D and the G string. It just always seemed to be out of, uh, out of position. And I have taught a few people uh, recently that have also had this problem, okay? Uh, so there might be a lot of you out there thinking, how do I get to do that. So this is really, really good practice for that. So um, we'll go through the line. So it's in E minor and we start with an E. So, okay, so open E and then the octave. So we've got an open E and then E there, second fret of the D string. And we have slap, slap, pop, slap. Okay, so Again, slowly, we've got, uh, obviously, the open string, and then I'm just using the first finger for the octave. Next, we move up to the G. So we've got third fret on the E string and fifth fret on the D string. And try and keep the pops quite staccato for this, uh, for this and the next uh, octave pattern. So we've got slap, slap, pop. So all together from the beginning. And for that octave pattern, I'm using the first finger and the fourth finger, okay? Next, we move up to the A octave. So fifth fret of the E string, seventh fret of the D string. Oh, sorry. And it's the same pattern, slap, slap, pop. So. that octave pattern again, first finger and fourth finger. Now the second time through that riff is exactly the same, up to the A. And then when we get to the A, we play slap, pop, slap. Okay? So that would sound like this. So 
So all together, both, both riffs. Okay, so the second one is a little bit odd uh, on the on the hand. So when you play that bit might seem easy, but then when you jump back to the E, you've got to kind of double up on the thumb, but it just just doesn't seem like it when you're coming through the riff because you've got and you don't think that you've got to play it again to play the E. So um, again, round and round slowly. So you want to practice that round and round uh, until you can get it off, and you know before you start playing it with the backing track. Because when they pl when you play it with the backing track, uh, the pressure's on because you know you just have to keep going. So you know practice it in your own time. Just you know don't feel too much pressure with it. You don't have to play it in time originally until you start you know until you've got it under your fingers and got the technique off. Now. Before we move on to the backing track, I just want to uh, give you a bit of a tip in terms of this, you know, E and D string slapping thing. Now, uh, it seems that one way that um, I tend to be able to teach people this is by not thinking of the thumb. Think more of the finger, the position wise. So when you go for something like that, that G, um, think of where, try and put your hand where the finger is going to go. So you want to start off there, put the put the finger in, just try popping a few times on that D string and take note of where you are with the position. Okay? Because it's quite easy, it doesn't matter where you are with the hand, you could have your hand here and you'd still probably be able to get back to slap the E string, but the finger is always going to be the problem. So base it on the finger. Base your hand position there. Once you've got the finger in under there and you can just pop that a few times, that's the position you want to be in. Hold the hand in that position. Okay, so I've got the hand in a loose fist there, not too tight, but fairly, you know, uh, fist-like. And um, I'm just putting the finger under there and just popping it out, so. Okay, now, um, if you can get the hand into that position with the finger there, have a look at where the thumb is. And just, just try popping some octaves there. Now, I know that when you go from, you know, being on the next strings up, the A and the D string, it might seem a bit odd to come back. But when you go for the, even, even with that, with the A and the D, uh, sorry, the A and the G string, uh, let's say we're uh, playing a C octave. You still want to use the popping finger as the method of getting the uh, position. So again, so there's a C octave. Look at where the finger is. That's that's where that's how to uh, get the position. Don't worry about the thumb. The thumb will be there. You know, if you can get the finger right, the thumb is there. It's not like you're going to get the the finger right and the thumb be over here somewhere. You know, it's going to be there. So finger first. Then when you go for the E and the D string, you move the hand. The hand isn't staying in the same position when you're, you know, you've got to move that, the, uh, the thumb down, you know, well, the finger, you know, because we're thinking about the finger. Okay, so just practice that. Practice, practice the popping, get the position, and that's it. So let's try it with the backing tracks. Now the backing tracks I've written in several different um, tempos. So uh, we've got it starting at I think 100, well 100 beats per minute and it eventually ends up at 140. So we've got it very slow to begin with. So let's try it at 100 beats per minute. So that would sound like this. So then you just work through the tempos yourself. So I won't I won't go through all of them, but now let's uh, work up to uh, 140 beats per minute. So this is full speed, okay? So
Okay, now let's have a look at the next riff. Now, this is one of the uh, very first slap bass riffs ever recorded, uh, and it's Thank You For Letting Me Be Myself by Sly and the Family Stone, which obviously features the uh, legendary Larry Graham on bass. So uh, this is one of the ones that started it all, if not the one that started it all. So um, here it is, I'll just play it at full speed first of all. So this tune's pretty much in E minor again, and uh, it's got a pickup, so or an anacrusis. So uh, when we start off, we've got the count in one, two, three, four, and ones. Okay, so we're on the and of four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and. Okay, so that we have to remember that when we start. So the first three notes are B, D, E. B, D, E. So we've got B, 7th fret of the E string, D, 5th fret of the A string, and E, 7th fret of the A string. Now I'll use the fingering 4th finger there for the B, and then 1st finger for both the D and the E, so we can move up into position for the octave. Okay, so those three notes, 1, 2, 3, 4 or slower, one, two, three, four, three, four. Now the next part of the riff changes depending on which part of the song you hear and who you hear playing it and uh, which version you hear of it. Um, but it's, when the first time you hear it, it's actually like this. Okay, so we've just got the pops. So we've got a pop there, E on the ninth fret on the G string. Then we've got a pop D there, seventh fret of the G string, and back to the ninth fret. E, D, E. Now, sometimes when you hear this played in other parts of the tune and when other people play it, uh, they'll hit mutes in between there and it keeps it nice and in time. So, okay, so I'm holding the hand there. So you can see the three fingers are laid across. And I'm, and I'm using the first finger barred across for the D and the fourth finger for the E. And it helps with keeping it funky, really. Um, gives you a bit, a bit more going on there, a bit more percussive. Here are the A string, no note there, just the muted note. So in time with the counting, it'd be one, two, three, four. Three, four. Now the next part of the riff, simply it moves back down to the D. So we have D, E, which I'm gonna play both with the first finger there, so fifth fret and seventh fret on the A string. And then we have the pop up there, E, E to D. So we've got the ninth fret and seventh fret. So this is very much like the first riff, but without the pickup. So, and we can put the mute in there as well. So D E. And like I said, depending on which part of the song you hear, sometimes that's actually played like this without the ghost note. With the ghost note. Okay, so both riffs put together. Three, four. So we're almost there with the riff. There's just one more variation on this. So uh, we have those first two riffs, then we have a repeat of it. But then the fourth time through, we have a little variation. So. This sounds, it, well, it sounds like this. Okay, so 
For this we have C sharp to D to open E. So C sharp, fourth fret of the A string, slide up or hammer on however you want to do it. C sharp to D, uh, so that's fourth fret to fifth fret A string, open E. And then we've got the, uh, the high E down to the D on the G string popped, which you can put a ghost note between if you want, so. So all together, we have one, two, three, four. So again, with the backing tracks, we'll start slow, 80 beats per minute, and work up to 107 beats per minute, uh, the original tempo. So here we are at 80, with the pickup. So as you might have noticed, it can be harder to play these riffs slower than it is to play them fast. As soon as you start slowing the tempo down, it becomes a lot harder to play rhythmically accurate. And um, you know, some of these riffs, they just fall under the fingers better at a fast speed. You know, you can really get into the rhythm of them. So. Uh, it is worth playing them at these slower tempos because it really uh, makes you think about the rhythm and really makes you try and dig in and uh, and listen to the uh, listen to the drums, listen to where the bass drum is, listen to where the snare is, um, and uh, you know it's really good practice. So um, the same with. Uh, the same with higher ground as well, you know, when I played it earlier on, you know, the, the slower tempo, it's really tough to keep uh, in time. So, uh, yeah, really good practice. So now we'll work up to the uh, fast tempo, 107 beats per minute, and this is the original tempo. Play that all day. Next, let's have a look at a much more percussive type of slap line, and that's Love Games by uh, Level 42, and that features the amazing Mark King. Now, this changes on almost every bar through the original, and uh, pretty much works around just a basic concept. Now, if you watch the band played live, you uh, can see how Mark plays around with this. So I'm gonna explain the basic idea behind the groove, and uh, then you can learn it and just play around with it yourself. So this is a great riff for experimenting with your own slap fills, uh, like I've shown in some of the previous videos. So uh, here's the basic riff at full speed. So you can hear there that we've got this consistent driving rhythm divided between the open E and these ghost notes from the fretting hand, you know, these palm slaps. Uh, and then we've got other little pops and fills that are worked into the last half of each bar. So let's look at the first part of the riff. So we have the open E uh, palm slap twice. So as I've shown in some of the other videos, you just bring the fingers down. Now, it's quite important to get the, this hand in the right position to do this. Now I'm laying this finger down, the first finger, around about the fifth fret. And then using the other three fingers there, these ones, 
to whack down. And I'm whacking down with round about that part of the hand. So that finger's down there, like that, and then I'm not, I'm not holding it down, I'm not fretting it, it would be just a mute if I was to slap it. So then, so we've got this flappy hand thing, <laughs> okay? So then when we play the open E, So we've got E, E. So slap, 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 palm, slap, slap, palm, slap. Okay? The next part of the riff has a little move uh, of ghost note. So proper ghost note. So we've held down the hand there. So it's not one of the slaps. It's We're actually slapping it. Then open E and then the palm slap. So ghost note, open E, palm slap. Okay, and we have that twice. So with the uh, opening. Very slow. Bit quicker. And often this can actually, uh, well, I mean, I'm working through it bit by bit, but when you actually listen to the original riff, you just really have to listen out for where those open E's are. You know, and, and it just becomes like a percussive uh, rhythm between the two hands, very much like drumming. So once we've got to there, after the, uh, once we've done that last palm slap, we have a ghost note, just normal ghost note there, and then we pop the D there. So seventh fret on the G string. So and you can hear that I'm uh, I'm cutting that quite short, the pop there, to give it more percussive uh, sound. So. And I'm slapping the uh, the E string for the uh, for the ghost note there. Then we've got two ghost notes, slapped and popped. So I'm playing the E string and the G string. So. And then we've got slap, D, hammer on to the E, okay? Oops. So all together. Uh, full speed. So that's the core part of the riff. Uh, so just play that round and round and round. Don't worry about adding these other parts uh, yet. Uh, just go round and round that, uh, that, uh, that part of the riff. Now the, uh, the other parts are just variations on this. So, and there's, and there's probably an infinite number of uh, variations you could do and Mark King does loads of them. Uh, but in the actual tune, he, uh, in the original, he does stick to a few uh, basic variations. Now, uh, the first of which sounds like this. Okay, so that's the same as the first riff. But we've got this added onto it. Two ghost notes, then A to B there, fifth fret to seventh fret on the E string, um, hammered on, so. And then D to E. So very slow again. So now let's try putting those two riffs together and then we'll play them with the backing track, okay? So the first one. 
And then the second one, put them together. Okay, so with the backing track, and we'll start at the slow tempo, so what we've got here, we've got 80 beats per minute, so. Now here it is at 90 beats per minute. Now I'll skip the next one and just move up to the uh, full speed. So this is 105 beats per minute. So I'll just throw in one more variation for good measure and uh, this one's going to use one of those little flamming techniques that I've been through in the other lessons that sounds like this. Okay, so we've got the same uh, opening to the riff but then we have the little flam and we're going to be using the open E for that. So we've got open E, then the hammer on slap, then the open E. And then we pop the D up there on the G string. So we start out slow. Now, as I've said, on the other lessons I go through this in depth. So if you're new to that, just go through the other lessons. But that's what we're going to be doing. So. <laughs> Then once we've played that, we can bring the hand down again and then play the D to the E hammer on, so. You can't really get much whack with the, uh, with the palm slap after we've hit the, uh, after we've hit the D, uh, but it keeps us in time and then we can come down, so. So there we've got three variations on that uh, original riff and um, you just need to work through with them, just mixing them up, trying things out, you can put little fills in there too. Uh, if you listen to any of the Level 42 concerts or Mark King's solo concerts, you'll see him messing around with it quite a bit. You know, he puts in his own fills and I think um, he generally moves into that song from his unaccompanied solo, so you'll get a lot of, you know, messing about with it. Um, there's a lot you can do. So um, I'll just, Play over the backing track and then just put them together, okay? Next up, we've got a slap riff in a more metal style, although it is still rooted in uh, funk bass, really. Uh, and that's the uh, opening slap riff, well, verse riff from Take the Power Back by uh, Rage Against the Machine. And with the backing track, that sounds like this.
This riffs in D minor and uses a detuned open E, okay, so that's tuned down to D. And luckily I've got my hip shot detuner here, so I can just take it down to D there. So um, we start out with an open D, okay, quite staccato, so I'm cutting it short with this hand. And if you were to listen to the original, there's, uh, there's a full section just doing that, so you get a bit of practice. So. Then we've got a, a hammer-on slap from C to D. So third fret to the fifth fret, A string. Next we have a ghost note, and I'm going to play this on the op uh, sorry the E string. So. So you can see the hand there after I've played the hammer on is just you know flattening out so I can play the ghost note. Then we've got a pop on the F there, the third fret of the D string, and we pull off to the open D. Okay? So the first finger there and just pop it off there. So So after the pull off, we've got another ghost note on the E string, so. So I've played the hammer on with the first and fourth fingers there, then the pull off with the first finger, and then we just lay the hand back down to play the ghost note. You see there's a lot going on with this hand, there's not so much going on with this, it's more in the fretting hand. After the ghost note we've got the pull off, uh, sorry the hammer on again, so from C to D. Now when I play this one, I generally play it with the first and third fingers, so different from the first time, so it gives us a bit more um, it puts us in position better for the F again, so. Then after the hammer on, we finally have one more ghost note on the E string there. So we rest the hand over and then we just play the F. And I always play a little bendy kind of vibrato thing there, so that's the first finger there for the F, so third fret of the D string. And that's the riff. So once you feel confident, we can start working through with the backing track. So we'll start at 80 beats per minute and see how it goes. Now we'll try it at 90 beats per minute. Now finally, full speed, 105 beats per minute that is. Now 
Now, the last slap riff that I'm going to cover is the famous line from Forget Me Nots by uh, Patrice Rushton. And this is originally played by the great Freddie Washington. And this riff was sampled for the song Men in Black by Will Smith. So, you know, even if you've not heard the original, you'll have heard this one. So uh, here it is with the backing track at the original speed. So this can be a fairly tricky riff to play uh, because of a lot of those little fast things that go on uh, at the uh, at the ends of the riff. So uh, we'll just go straight into it. So we start with an F sharp octave. So second fret on the uh, E string and fourth fret on the D string. So we have hold the bottom note, cut the top note short. You want a nice clean octave there. Then. A, 5th string, 5th uh, fret on the E string, and then D, 5th fret of the, uh, of the A string, and the octave, 7th fret of the G string. And as always with these octaves, I'm playing them with the 1st and the 4th fingers. Once you've played that pop at the top, you play the bottom D again. So next we play the E, we play this with the 4th finger there, so 7th fret of the A string, we play ghost note first and then the E. So, so two E's. Then we've got the C sharp here, three times, all staccato. Then E to F sharp, hammer on. Okay, second fret of the D string to fourth fret of the uh, D string. And that's slapped. And then we're back to the uh, start of the riff. So again. Again. The second line in the riff is pretty much the same as the first, so we've got the F sharp octave and the D. Now instead of going to the E, we then play this F sharp to G sharp here on the D string, so we've got the 4th uh, fret to the 6th fret. Now I've seen this done two different ways. You can either slap the first note, slap the second note, pull off. And every time you do it, so we're kind of playing a trill there, but slapping the first note of each one. So slap, pull off, slap, pull off, slap, pull off, slap, pull off, from the G sharp that is. So we've got, we slap the, the first one, the F sharp, and that helps at the faster tempo. So when you get up to speed, it's not too bad. But <laughs> I have seen Freddie Washington play this on some random uh, rehearsal video on YouTube that you might have seen, and I'm pretty sure he slaps every note. Now it doesn't sound like that on the original, it does sound like, but it looks like he's playing, which, which does have a different sound, and it's a lot tougher to do. I mean, your thumb's really got to move. So you can play it however you want, you can play either one, but I would recommend for uh, beginners especially to, you know, to just use the pull-offs there. So, we've got... So we've got two pull-offs, F sharp, G sharp, G sharp, and then we finish on the G sharp. 
you ever have problems, just isolate the movement. Then we move down to the C sharp again. C sharp, C sharp, E, F sharp. All slapped. C sharp, C sharp, fourth fret on the A string, then second fret on the D string to fourth fret on the D string. And you can put a ghost note in before the C sharp. So all together. And the two riffs together. And we're back to the beginning. So those are the first two lines. The third line is a repeat of the first line. And then the fourth line is another variation. So the first three lines are like this. And we're back, okay? So those first three lines. Now this one's another variation, so we have we work up to the little pull-offs again. Then we have we have C sharp, E, C sharp. Then we have F sharp, E, C sharp. So fourth fret for the C sharp, second fret of the uh, D string there for the E, then fourth fret for the F sharp, second fret of the D string, and back to the fourth fret of the A string. So. Okay, so that's the line. So all together, all four lines. So once you have it nailed, we'll try with the backing track. So we'll start 80 beats per minute, see how it goes. So I've supplied all the tracks that work uh, progressively through the uh, tempos up to 114 beats per minute. So you can work through them in your own time, you know, build up, build up. Don't rush, uh, you know, if you're having problems with any of them, stay there or move back one. And uh, yeah, I'll just uh, go in for the full speed now. So 114 beats per minute. Okay, so that's my uh, five must-know slap bass riffs. As I've mentioned before, I've kept them short and I'm not covering complete songs. Uh, but if you've got any more suggestions, I can do another five uh, must-know bass riffs and possibly dedicate a full complete lesson to one single bass riff. So just let me know what you think. 
So please like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel and you'll be able to keep up to, uh, up to date on all the weekly releases. Uh, I generally release one every Friday. Also check out the lesson map over at TalkingBass.net for more HD video bass lessons. All the lessons are divided up into topics and laid out in a progressive manner so that you can work through them at your own pace. And I'm adding ones to it all, all the time. And uh, also subscribe to the uh, Talking Bass um, uh, newsletter to receive your free scale reference guide, which is a PDF ebook containing every scale that you're uh, likely to need along with details on their construction. Uh, I also give Skype bass lessons. So if you're interested in a more personal tuition experience, then uh, just drop me an email and uh, we can sort out a day and time. Okay, see you later.